Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm going to do a very quick guide on how to install a front dash cam on a Volkswagen Golf. This is the hybrid one, so it's the electric engine one, a GTE version. And I'm going to show you how to wire it to the car's fuse box so that basically it goes on and off with the vehicle's ignition system. So you turn it off, camera goes off, turn it on, camera goes on. I'm also going to show you how to hide the wires and some little trips and tips, uh, tricks, get my words out, tricks and tips on that. And um, should be able to do this job within about an hour. So if you allow yourself about an hour, uh, take your time with it and make a nice job of it. We're looking for a factory fitted finish. So let me just start by saying that by following this video guide, I'm held no way liable or responsible for any damage to your vehicle or injury to yourself or others. With that out of the way, we move on to what are ideal tools to have to do this job. Multimeter or one of the little screwdrivers with a light bulb in the end where you can touch on the end of something and it lights up if the circuit's live. Electrical tape, a pair of wire snips, long nose pliers. Now you don't technically need these. I use them for getting the fuses out of the fuse box. The cars do come with a little plastic thing for grabbing the fuse and you can pull the fuse out with it. Some fuse boxes on certain cars are recessed quite a long way so long nose pliers are quite handy for that. The Golf's not too bad. Three cable ties and the most important tool of the lot probably is a plastic leverage tool such as this one because you'll be levering bits of trim off your car and the trim is made of plastic so obviously you do not really want to be levering it with a screwdriver you will leave dints and marks on the trim and basically it'll make a mess of it so under no circumstances use anything metal get yourself a plastic leverage tool you can buy these from car shops amazon ebay They're normally like on ebay for sort of a couple of quid for three well worth your while and it will be used a fair bit. Other thing that's handy depending on brand of camera, a fitting kit. This is a next base camera going in this car so we're having a next base fitting kit. Fitting kit required, has basically got everything in it you require to do the job. It replaces the power cable that comes with the camera and in the box has this. Everything you need for the job. Interference suppressor for DAB radios. This is a ferrite one. I will warn you in advance. Very limited in what they can do. Uh, sometimes you'll put a DA, you'll put a dash cam into your car with a DAB radio, and you will get interference. So just bear that one in mind. Talk to your retailer or supplier of the dash cam, and just ask them how well the, the, the camera itself is shielded to reduce dab interference. I do need to stress the point, dab only, DAB radio, will not affect your FM or AM at all. Cameras do tend to affect dab radio, especially on certain Mercedes models, Kia models, Nissan models. Some are not too bad, some are, you won't know until you try it, but like I say, check that your camera is shielded, ideally. Next up, it comes with a fuse spur. Uh, basically, this is a socket doubler. So you pull a fuse from the fuse box, an accessory position fuse, a non-critical one. So no airbags, you know, no ABS, no EC or anything like that. We will be testing that later on in the video and I'll show you how to do that. So basically, you pull the fuse out. You, the fuse that you've pulled out goes in this slot here to run the original circuit. And the little two or three amp that's already in here will run your camera. This then shoves into the fuse box and basically doubles it up. So it creates a double socket out of one socket. A little bit like the four-way extensions you use at home, where you plug it in your main socket and it gives you four extra sockets. Same thing. It's bullet connected on the end already, so it's ready to go. If you're not using a fitting kit and you want one of these, you're really, really easy to buy. You can get them on eBay. They're normally about £1.50, £2. Um, make sure you get the right one. There are different sizes. This is a mini blade size. There's also micro blade size and there's the normal blade fuse size. There's sort of three common sizes and then there's one for triple fuses like in the new Fiestas. I'd avoid using those if where possible. Stick to mini blade, micro blade. Mini blade here, like I say, micro blade it is a lot thinner. The prongs are really near each other. So you'll know what you've got in your car. If unsure, just do a quick Google on your car and it'll tell you whether it uses mini or micro blade, etc. Do change from year to year and they do change depending on what continent the vehicle is sold on so does the fuse box specification so bear that in mind please we're currently working on a right hand drive uk car for this one next up you get a power cable 
Uh, this camera uses mini USB, which is there. Some of them use micro USB, which is thinner. And some use a little round one. Uh, so obviously get the one that fits your camera. On the end of this, it terminates in an earth cable with a spur on it there to put under an earthing bolt, such as dashboard mounting bolt is ideal. I'll show you that a bit later on. And of course, the end that plugs into the fuse spur. There's your power cable, which plugs into this. Just there, look, so it sort of bullet connects into it. So if you've got all the bits and you're ready to go, and you've got yourself a spare hour, um, if you don't know where your fuse box is, I'll make it simple and quick for you. It's here. It's behind your glove box. Now your glove box on these uh, basically has spring tabs here. Yeah. And up underneath here is two lugs. I don't know if I can position the camera well enough to see them. It's really dark. Basically you press with your finger up really hard because they are really, really stiff. Up on both of them. Ideally at the same time, so yes, it's quite fun. And your glove box will lower, and as it does so, there's like a ratchet just here, look, plastic one that goes in this. Basically the bar comes out, slides out, drops down. If you're unsure about that, refer to your car's owner's manual, because it tells you how to do it and how to get the fuse box. I mean, it's a basic thing, you know, but it does show you in more detail. Fuse box, as you can probably see, I'm going to have to open the door. Now, I do apologise for the noise. I'm looking right near a very busy road and this construction. I do not get to choose where I do these jobs. So there's your fuse box in all its glory. And all your mini blade fuses across there, your larger fuses here. Now, like I say, we will be using an accessory position fuse. So, first things first, we're going to prepare our cable. Your ferrite dab radio interference suppressor is on a hinge, like so, and little click tabs there hold it together, squeeze shut. So we open that up, and basically all we do is put the cable through it, you're leaving a couple of inches before the end there. So the cable goes through it, round the back of it, and then back out, leaving, like I say, a couple of inches on the end so it can plug into your camera snugly, like so. Nice and simple, look, through, round, and back out the other side. That's your interference suppressor done. Then move along, measure your cable up against the roof of the vehicle. We're on the passenger side of this particular vehicle, so we're on the left hand side of the rear view mirror. This is going to be, and the reason it's going to be there and up as high as it can possibly be is to keep it out of the wiper sweep region. Now, in the UK, it is illegal to have anything dangling down in the vision of the driver, so anything in wiper sweep will fail an MOT or possibly get you pulled over by police. So if you've got a sat nav stuck in the middle of your windscreen, just be aware that you can be pulled over for it. Likewise, if you've got a dangly air freshener hanging off your rear view mirror or anything else dangling off your mirror, yep, it's illegal, you can get in trouble for it. Yes, we've had reports of that happening, so I've got to point that out, okay? Up to you, obviously, if you want to break that rule, just be warned. So, cable tie wrap round it, snip the abscess off, cover it in electrical tape. Now, what this is for, is when you tuck this up above your headline in, um, the cable's quite thin. If you hit one of our lovely potholes, or any pothole in any country for that matter, um, it shakes the car, it is possible for the cable to drop down across the window screen while you're driving along. Yeah, nothing to hold it in place because it's smooth and it's thin. This is basically to bulk the cable out a bit so it's got something to just sort of help it stay put above the window screen. The reason I cover them in tape like this is because if you've ever used cable ties, you may know, they can have sharp edges once you've snipped them. Well, your headlining is made of like a cloth or a fibre substance, and I suppose over time, keep it in all the road bumps and, you know, potholes, it could rub, and in theory it could rub and make a mess of the inside of the headlining. So it's just, it's probably a bit over the top, but it's something I always do. So go ahead and cover all three in tape, and then we're looking at mounting it in the headlining. So here we are at the top of the window screen, mirror here, and all we've done now normally on a lot of cars, including the Golf, you can normally just get your fingers under and ease it down slightly. Uh, this particular car was really, really, really tight, like I said, it's only a few months old, so uh, we've just used the plastic leverage tool, we've slid it in just to get a little gap going. Now, you know, be careful with this bit. Don't go at it like a bull in a china shop. It's only made of this fibre substance and it's easy to crease or damage it. So just pull it down just enough to be able to tuck your cable ties up and under, all three, all the way along, until you get to the corner here. 
you get to the corner, open the door. You can normally put your fingers in, they're normally not tight. This one, like I say, was tight, so I've had to pop the little trim tool in. Be careful, there's an airbag behind there, you don't want to puncture it. And pull, and it will unclip on the front here, and then you can normally put your fingers here and just give it a bit of a tug and the back clip will go as well. That enables you to pull the thing quite far away, look. Move our trim tool there. And behind it, there's your airbag. Now your cable needs to feed behind the airbag on this particular model, so just tuck it behind. Don't worry, your airbag won't go off. You can sort of prod at it, look, without it going off. Um, it needs to go behind it. A lot of cars only have an airbag that sort of starts here and goes down, so you can go above them, out of the way, or below them if they're up at the top. This one goes all the way across, all the way up the pillar and all the way across the roof. So you go behind it and then run your cable down the edge here to the bottom. And there we go. Cable routed behind the airbag, through the corner and out. So once your cable's in, uh, tap everything back on. You know, they're on clickers there. And don't forget to get your rubber seal and just basically peel it back into position so that it's uh, got the headlining tucked neatly underneath it. Like I say, we are aiming for a, a factory finish, so you don't want any odds and ends, etc. And there we go. So that's back to how it looked originally. Now we're going to come down to the corner of the dashboard with the door open and remove this panel here. Now this panel is on clicks, little plastic clicky things, clips as such, and we're just going to remove it. It just pops off, it can be a bit stubborn, and if they pop off all at once, just watch it doesn't fall. You've got a, an airbag cable behind there for that. Um, it's quite long, you can normally just move it out of the way to do it. Because behind here, and behind this bit, is a mounting bolt we're going to use for the earth. So go ahead and remove this panel all the way around, just click it. I'm going to need both hands free to be able to support it, so uh, I'll show you when it's off. So there's the panel off. Nice thick chunky wire look to your, to your airbag thing. This piece here is on, again, a little click connects. Just put your fingers behind it. I'm going to pull. You'll see what I mean. You'll see how it hooks in uh, and remove that to get to the bolts behind it. There we go. Plastic clips. Pop that safely out of the way. So this nut here is ideal for your earthing cable. Okay, you've got two choices. You can either take the nut off and put the black wire behind it. So your black wire here with the shoe, yeah, to this. Or you can put it on there and then put another nut on top of it. It's up to you how you sandwich it. Removing this nut will not make the dashboard loose. There's plenty more holding it in place. So there we go, there's our earthing point, black wire there to the bolt, all earthed up nicely. You can then run your red wire, your power feed cable, through the back, round and out into the fuse box area. Now you're going to need your multimeter or your test screwdriver for this. With the ignition on, find yourself an accessory circuit. Now I've done these before, so uh, I sort of know which ones to use and which not to use. So the 5 amp here on this particular spec car, showing voltage there with the ignition on. And if we turn the ignition off, it will show zero. And there we go, zero volts. In fact, on this UK spec car, the entire bottom row here are switched live fuses. Um, but like I say, you need an accessory circuit, nothing to do with engine management or ABS or airbags or anything like that, only an accessory circuit. Myself here, I'm going to be using the 5 amp second from the end of bottom row, so we'll go ahead, turn the ignition off and pull that fuse out. There we go. Now you will notice on testing the power, on the end of the fuses, there are silver contacts which are part of the fuse itself and that's where you touch your test probe on the ends. If you're using one of them little screwdrivers obviously it lights up when you touch them when the ignition's on and it stays off when the ignition is off. That fuse we can now put in the end of our fuse spur in the, in the spare gap just at the side there and plug this back in the fuse box. There we go, fuse plugged in and now we can put this, the whole thing, Probably need both hands for this guys, but we're putting that back in the slot there. 
like so. Power cable tucked out of the way. Next thing to do is tidy all your excess cable up because you're going to have tons of it like this. So we're going to ball that up nicely and cable tie it up. There we go. We've got the bulk of it tucked out of the way up here and the extra little bit down here. Not really worth clipping your end panel back on yet. Not until you've tested your camera is working fine. So with our camera neatly in place at the top of the window screen, let's turn the ignition on. Like so. And there we go. On it comes. So, turn off again. There we go. Now you're free to put your end panel back on again. Don't forget, rear little panel first. Shove fit at the bottom, so push and clip. Peel your rubber trim over it all the way up. This bit tucks underneath this bit, so up and under. And then carefully get your airbag one, tuck your cable in, and obviously pop that back on. These connectors, you have to give them a bit of a whack. There we go, that's that back on. Close your glove box. Don't forget to thread the arm here in the ratchet system here when you lift your glove box up. And that, guys, is how you fit a dash cam on a Volkswagen Golf Hybrid. Any questions, pop them in the comments below. I do my best to answer the questions as quickly as possible, but bear in mind I do get inundated with questions every day. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now.